So, um, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Yaroslav Zinchuk and I work at Perspective Company. For over 14 years, we've been assisting our clients not only with the development of their online stores, but also in implementing the right strategies and tools for their businesses. Today, I would like to share practical experience in implementing a modern, not a traditional approach in using the related products, upsell, and cross-sell functionalities. So uh, the primary issue I want to discuss today is that many of our clients have a powerful tool at their disposal capable of increasing the average value by up to 50%. However, they either aren't aware of its existence, don't know how to utilize it effectively, or mistakenly consider it ineffective. So let's discuss the difference between related upsell and cross-sell products. So related products, uh, these are items recommended to customers based on their preferences and browsing behavior with the goal of encouraging additional purchases and increasing the average order value. For example, if you're buying a phone and you prioritize technical specification of a brand, the product recommendation block will display various brands with similar features. Alternatively, complementary products like camera bags, tripods, additional lenses, or uh, some memory cards can be proposed to a client when he buying a digital camera. Uh, speaking about upsell products, uh, it's a kind of marketing strategy where a seller offers a customer more expensive or advanced version of a product than the one originally selected by the customer. Uh, for instance, if a customer is choosing a smartphone, an upsell could be involved offering to buy a model with more storage or advanced features. Uh, speaking about cross-sell products, uh, the goal is the same, encouraging additional purchases. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, it involves offering a complementary products or services to the customer based on their primary purchase. For example, if a customer is selecting a laptop uh, Cross-selling could include some suggestions uh, like uh, office software, a mouse, or extended warranty as additional items. Uh, these suggestions are often placed in this shopping cart, and it is somehow like a last-minute impulse purchase before the checkout. So as we have a basic understanding of these concepts, I'll try to show you how we can effectively use them. Uh, so um, I'd like to provide you some kind of overview of uh, different features and different approaches. And let's start from a traditional model, like manual related products. So the advantage here is that most content management systems has this feature out of the box. It is easy to use if you know your product range and you analyze your sales and can offer alternative options or accessories for the main product. Uh, for any uh, store owner, it's a great starting point. However, there are some drawbacks. Despite being a cost-effective solution, it can be time-consuming. So you as a owner or store manager may need to create a list of relationships add new ones, make some adjustment, adjustments, and invest your personal time. Or you might have a hired employee doing that, for sure. Uh, for stores with a small product range, this might be a big time sink. But for stores with over 10,000 products, it's possible uh, that one content manager won't be enough. Uh, the situation becomes even more complex when you're constantly updating your product range. Uh, so I want to show you uh, a visualization of how it works in Adobe Commerce or Magento. So the uh, uh, functionality is very simple. You can see uh, these kind of blocks. 
uh, like related products, upsell products, cross sell. You can add here manually some products, change their position, remove them and so on. Of course, you can import them using some uh, CSV file and somehow to automate this process, but still uh, it is time consuming. Uh, a good example uh, of these kind of manual uh, related products, you can find on this website. Uh, for example, if you see the smartphone Xiaomi, uh, it's cost something around 22,000, 23,000. And as a related item, we can see a different model with almost the same features and of course a different price. If you if we move to the accessories, we can find here some headphones, cables, adapters, and so on, which can increase your orders uh, value. So um, <clears throat> you may ask if there are any way to automate this process. Indeed, there are numerous solutions available in the market that can be installed and configured for automation. For instance, in Adobe Commerce, there is related product rules functionality, a feature that automatically determines and displays related products in the live store based on various criteria and customer data, like purchase history, average order value, or color preferences. So using different rules and conditions in combination with customer segments, you can build these rules. This functionality can save you a lot of time, but it won't be entirely hands-free. You'll still need to, again, create, improve, and constantly update these rules and conditions. And if your product range frequently changes, it's again one uh, more and more time. However, you can finally tune related products and segments users so that the relevance of the recommendations remain high. Uh, so I'm going to show you how it's built again in Adobe Commerce. Uh, so you, for example, can create some kind of match. Uh, let it be category 24. Uh, doesn't matter what's there, smartphones or some uh, sneakers or whatever. So you want to add the related products. So you can choose what uh, condition they should be they uh, should be matched. And for example, uh, you select the matched product color. For example, it's a red uh, smartphone. So all red smartphones for different categories will be shown to the customer, but the price will be 20% more than the original price. So you can create a lot of uh, different uh, rules and still it will be enough maybe for, your, uh, for some time, but it's not fully automated. Uh, so there is another solution uh, by Algolia. So I suppose you've heard about this company. It is famous for its search engine. Um, and um, another way uh, is to create these kind of recommended products is to use its algorithms. So they have such a feature like recommend by Algolia. So it's a headless search engine uh, and it has its own uh, AI uh, maybe component. So the integration process is smooth, simple, and not time consuming. On some uh, our projects, our clients offer several collections of recommended products using Algolia. Uh, so, and it's also possible not to show the recommended products on the product page, but also on the card page, for example, allowing users to see some complementary products or cross sales and so on. So uh, just as an example, uh, we can see uh, this kind of product and this site is using the Algolia engine. Uh, so for example, you've chosen this product and there are some 
additional uh, related products that customers were buying previously. So it's based on some conversions and selection of the customers. There are different types and prices of the provided items. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of blocks, not only one. So, and if we, for example, buy and go to the cart, we can see additionally some proposals for the customers that can increase their order value. Um, so, uh, the recommend by Algolia is based on two different algorithm types. So, the first one is collab collaborative filtering. Uh, so it somehow like it's similar, it finds similar when the same set of users interacts with them and frequently bought together when the same set of users bought them. Also, uh, the content-based filtering analyze key attributes of items such as their titles, descriptions, attributes like color, material, uh, and so on. Uh, another model is like the trending items model. Uh, it, it, it looks for items in your product catalog that have recently become popular. So it is based on conversion rates. Uh, a good example here I want to show you uh, is uh, this website. So I chose the, the first boots that I found on this website. And I found it very useful as it proposed different models from different vendors uh, with almost the same price range or even higher. So it's okay, but again, it provided a full range of the same brain products and it provides the better together option. So it, I think this kind of uh, visualization proposes your customers a good example how you should combine and uh, increase your order value. So also, uh, I found useful these blocks as it's dynamic. So when some brands, uh, some brand has more conversions, uh, this list is changing regarding categories and brands. Um, so, uh, the, another thing that, uh, for example, if we're talking about Algolia, you can use, uh, these models together, for example, by showing trending categories on your homepage in a carousel layout, uh, in showing some trading items. So here is a good example. You can see the best sellers and currently in demand, uh, items. They are constantly changing and they are based on the conversion rates. So maybe tomorrow we'll see in other categories here and in other items. So that's the homepage, not a product page, filled with a lot of different categories and items. Uh, so I believe that many of you have heard about ChatGPT and some of you might even use it regularly. But did you know that you can integrate ChatGPT into your website to analyze user queries and provide product recommendations? So the process is being constantly improved through data analysis and recommendation optimization. And ChatGPT allows users to interact with your website naturally, create a more personalized, personalized and user-friendly experience. One of its advantages is its ability to work with various types of content and information, making it a flexible option for displaying product recommendations and responding to user queries. It can be trained to distinguish even homonyms. For example, uh, if uh, you have a website and you have knives in different categories, such as kitchen knives, hunting knives, knives for meat grinders, pairing knives, and more. If a user type a knife in the search and goes into kitchen knives category, chat GPT analyzed and would offer only relevant product recommendations 
and accessories. It understands a cause and effect relationships and has a high depth of knowledge. I'm gonna show you a simple example. Of course, it's not the use of API of the chat GPT, but still you can understand how it thinks and gather the information. I asked him to uh, recommend five classic sneakers similar to uh, Reebok Classic Leather. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, do you have, do you see my screen? Because I'm not sure you see it properly. Yes, we can see your screen in the chat GPT at the moment. Ah, okay. Uh, so, I ask him to recommend five classic sports sneakers similar to Reebok Classic Leather. And it provided five perfect examples, uh, not because uh, they are similar, they are popular and they are famous over the internet. So when, after that result, I ask him, would you recommend as an accessory to those sneakers? So, and again, I see a perfect choice for any customer that would buy uh, with uh, sneakers, some kind of this stuff, like a caps, bags, watches, and so on. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to delve into the details of fine tuning its functionality today, but it's feasible and the integration process isn't overly complex. So um, to wrap up, um, I'd like to provide an overview of a product from our partner, in addition to the numerous features offered by Sales Manago. It also provides the option to display product recommendations of your website. Like all the tools mentioned earlier, it is designed to boost sales and enhance the user experience. The integra integrating Sales Manago uh, is relatively straightforward. You place the code on your website, install or install the extension module, connect to the API, configure data collection, and set a few tests for your front-end developer to adjust the appearance uh, of the product recommendation block. Uh, so uh, we had uh, several experience using this uh, extension, and it's really simple uh, from the beginning. So uh, I'm going to show you the uh, overview, a small overview of the functionality of the extension. Uh, so it has a simple uh, uh, functionality. So you just need to export context, export purchases, and export cards. So after that, the information goes into sales medical system and the product data is analyzed. Uh, then you connect to the API and you can pull the data from the air and integrate it into your website showing the recommendation using the AI. Uh, so uh, talking about the uh, functionality itself, so you can create the different audience segments. For instance, you can create a segment for returning customers and another for new users visitors, you can also set up campaigns for automatically providing product recommendations to your customers. Uh, for example, uh, if someone is browsing uh, products in the electronics category, the system can automatically suggest related items or offer discounts on products in that category. So a good profitability of this feature is that uh, it is running in real time. So it's not based on the history of some users. It can produce uh, the uh, suggestions in real time. A good example you can find uh, on the Macy's website. So preliminary, uh, I went into the uh, this shared uh, product page. So I just scrolled down, uh, went through the whole page, and then I decided to select some shoes. But when I entered these shoes, I saw the proposition and some kind of suggestion of the viewed items, again, with the 
cross sell and upsell products and different variants of the similar items. So I suppose this kind of visualization for the user allows him to select different products and decide the better one. Uh, so uh, the there are five types of AI recommendations. There are even more types, but I suppose that the next presentations uh, will cover some of them. And I'm going to show you that the selection of types is very vast and you can use them uh, in composition with others. Uh, so to summarize the above, I want to say that all the tools and models are good enough and definitely each of you will find it uh, useful. And I wish you big sales and many happy customers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yanoslav, uh, very, very nice presentation. Uh, do we have any questions? Guys, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to write them uh, in the answer and question section. You can also write them into chat if you prefer. Uh, so yeah, uh, do we have any questions? I don't see any at the moment. If anything will come up, uh, we will go back to them after the I book a presentation. So right now, uh, I book a will take you through uh, automations in Sentinelago and show you the ways to improve the average order value by using the Sentinelago features. So I book a feel free to start to respond. Thank you, thank you, Jacob. So um, let me share my screen. I hope you can see my screen right now. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you. So um, let me just quickly introduce myself and who we are, and I will jump into the solutions today um, to especially increase the average order value. How we see the industry, uh, how we experience, how we have the experiences from our clients. Uh, so let's get started. My name is Aybuke. I'm working as a solution engineer at Sales Manago. Uh, my specialization is based on the e-commerce softwares and marketing automations. And for the past seven years, I've been working with different tools um, to, to actually um, help companies uh, achieve uh, growth in their e-commerce uh, systems. Um, and at Sales Manago, our mission is to uh, enable impact-hungry uh, marketing teams um, obsessed with crafting lifelong relationships with their customers. So today, um, just a quick introduction I just wanted to highlight. And then um, throughout the years, we see that actually we have the privilege of work, working with more than 2,000 companies. And uh, with that experience that we gained actually from different industries, such as fashion, home and, um, uh, home and furniture, uh, automotive, electronics, grocery and food, We've uh, we've seen some of the best use cases that we implement and that increases uh, average order value, but we continue to innovate in the digital engagement um, part still. So let's get started. Before we dive into the solutions with average order value, I just wanted to highlight one point because it really depends on the industry that you're working. Uh, so before we assess uh, any kind of metric, we need to know um, what are what is the situation of ours currently. If we are doing a good job, or we need to really improve and focus on increasing the average order value. And the industries has different dynamics. So when you look at the table here, the home and furniture has um, 254 average order value USD. And when we look at a consumer goods company, you can see it's much more lower. So it is totally normal uh, and we need to aware and we need to assess accordingly the, the industry that we are working. Uh, with that said, let's continue. What are the key strategies that we see and we experience? So we have three, uh, I want to highlight three sales strategies to improve average order value. And you can see the, those are free shipping discounts and upsell and cross sell scenarios. Um, the first two one, the free shipping and the discounts are very traditional and um, the ones that we can say as quick wins. So when we say free shipping, if you have an average order value 100 euro, uh, and uh, you basically um, 
put one side header on your website and say, okay, uh, if you if your basket is above a hundred and fifty um, dollars and euros, then the, the the shipping will be free. So you basically encourage your customers to add more items uh, to to have the advantage of this free shipping. And the second one is the discounts and time sensitive offers. For example, if I visit a website um, and I know what I need, uh, what I want to buy, for example, a, a t-shirt I want to buy, but if I see that there's a, a time limited offer regarding the accessories categories category, then I just start scrolling down also the products from those uh, that accessories category. So that even if I don't have in mind when I visited first time that um, website, time sensitive offers can really uh, push and encourage your customers to add more items that they don't have in mind in the first place. So those are the two things that we position as quick wins. And at the third stage, you can see at the third part, the upselling and cross-selling scenario. So these scenarios are much more um, like serving for long-term relationships. And I would like to get deep dive into the uh, some of the examples. So the first one is choosing the right recommendation engine, because if we want to increase the average order value, now we are focusing on the journey within the website that your customers have. Uh, the first one of the, the major um, items, one of the major scenarios we can activate is using the recommendation frame. And uh, Yaroslav already mentioned um, the machine learning based and AI based um, algorithms and scenarios in detail. Uh, I also wanted to um uh, make this um like make the highlight point here with user centric approach leads the game compared to item based scenarios which means that when we say user centric approach it uh, we define the user centric approach as we get the reference point from other customers. So if I see that, okay, um, the other customers also check these products who also check the product that you are viewing right now, or other customers also purchase this product with the product that you are viewing right now. Uh, so we actually use other people's experiences uh, on the website. The second one is that when we say the item-based approach, these are more generic scenarios related to, for example, the products from the same category or relative products. So there is no point to, to make the reference for other people's preferences, but we basically put uh, some of the scenarios to recommend some items. Uh, but what we see, the top three chosen by top, top three chosen scenarios by companies are related to AI based, and most of them is the user based, um, the user centric users user centric approach. So you can see the most frequently purchased together items. Other customers also check these ones, and the best selling products of the category are leading the way. And um, when we start using and activating those scenarios, you'll be able to see the click through rates and the outcomes, the revenue coming from those recommendation frames easily. So it's also important to measure them, of course. At the second stage, once we start activating these uh, scenarios, what we see as a trend actually for the past one year, uh, companies not only choose one scenario, one recommendation within their product pages. For example, they start using, they started to use much more scenarios when they see the, the benefit of the recommendation frames. If they start using, for example, um, the last visited items, then they want to just offer another recommendation frame within the product page and say, okay, uh, these are the best sellers of the category or most frequently bought together items. Uh, so this is another actually point that could increase the click-through rates in the recommendation frames. So when we look at the, some of the, the statistics, uh, using a recommendation frame only uh, like increases um, the 55% of the, re um, the revenue uh, that you get and also increases the click-through rates very easily up to 75%. And if you double and if you multiply those scenarios much more, it, increase, it, it, it will likely to increase the click rates up to 36%. Uh, so based on uh, your um, uh, industry and sector that you're working, it would be really important to start with a scenario that fits to your strategy and then upgrade these scenarios with much more relative recommendation frames. 
that would be the first thing um, regarding the recommendation frames and how we how it can increase the average order value. The second one is once we select the strategy, the business frame that we want to use, it's also important that we recommend these products within the website journey, not only in the product pages, but also we need to activate those product recommendations in other widgets or components within website. Uh, the recommendation frame on basket basket pages for example maybe we would like to just offer some recommendation frames um some recommended products when they added some items into their basket so if we know wh what value they have on their basket we can easily adjust um up to how much value that we want to offer other products if we know that this person has already highest value average order value maybe we can offer the products with more uh, higher pricing the, the second one, um, since we want to also activate it with other widgets, some examples include pop-up scenarios. Pop-ups are great ways to um, grab the interest of your users, of your visitors and the website. But also you can use um, like uh, of the website, the, the pop-ups main basic usage actually to ask questions to your customers, especially to collect their email address. But you can also use the pop-ups in a way that you keep the attention with the products that they're interested in. So you can basically um, put and position some of the product recommendations within the pop-ups itself when they're about to leave the website, maybe. You will say, like, before you leave us, see what else we have in the same category, or these also might interest you. Uh, and these uh, these uh, recommendations and these activating these widgets can increase clicks um, up to 35% compared to static pop-ups. Static means where the, the pop-ups that you basically ask their email address maybe. Um, so this is the second uh, way to uh, actually improve the, the average order uh, value in terms of upselling scenarios. And the third one, uh, we can also activate other widgets during this website journey. One of them is the social proof mechanisms. Basically, social proofs are there to use the wisdom of the crowd, which means when you go to a product page, you will see a little notification bar where it says, okay, hurry up. Uh, 500 people or are already looking at this product or 5,000 people, 10,000 people just uh, purchased this product before or um, 50 people just added this product before and it's about to be out of stock. So you basically create this urgency in the customers. And even if they don't, like they're not sure to buy the item or not, they will be more likely to add this product uh, to their basket and uh, complete the purchase. Uh, the personal shopping inbox. This is another widget um, that you can activate within the website and it will basically show three recommendations, three main uh, parts in this little notification bar. Uh, you can just announce your um, new promo offers in the notifications part. In the second part, they will be able to see last viewed items. So if they visited um, some of the products, they don't need to remember again and again. They will simply find the products they visited early in this section. And the third one is the favorite products. When they add some of the products to their wish list or favorites, they will be able to see and reach out those product pages uh, immediately. So we want to actually um, make the, their experience a bit uh, like quicker, a bit better uh, during the website visit. Um, let's take a look at the other uh, widgets and components that can increase this average order value and basket size. We see the live chat scenarios also are another way to communicate with your customers and also recommend some of the products that they they might be interested in. One important point here, uh, the live chat scenarios, it's basically um, uh, organized to, uh, to have the human touch with your customers. But uh, when they start talking to you, when they're ask, asking some of the questions related to products they're interested in, your call, call center representative, customer service representative who's answering them, can immediately recommend some of the products based on the contact card that they have uh, on their um, screen. So they basic, if they basically can see the, the products they already purchased, for example, one month ago, then they can easily recommend some of the products they might be interested in in the same category or some complementary items. So you can just position live chats in a way that, that can increase your upsells. 
Um, the, the, the last one that you see uh, on the screen is the loyalty-based scenarios. Um, some companies are using loyalty-based scenarios a lot uh, and they have some tiers uh, regarding their customers, such as platinum customers, gold customers, silver customers. So if we if they are collecting some of the points and we want to encourage them to add more items, you, you can easily use this gamification scenarios where you say, for example, OK, you are now in the gold batch. Uh, and if you spend 50 more euro, you will have you will be in the platinum batch and you will have these kind of perks and rewards in the platinum batch. So during their visit on your website, you can easily use this personalization recommendations um, within some pop-up scenarios or uh, other notification bars. Um, those would be the, the summary that I would like to just um, highlight, but we came to the point that it is really, three things are really essential to effectively use all these sales strategies to increase average order value. One is having a single source of truth in our system, in your system. So if we don't know how, if we don't have any data, uh, like what they're interested in, what categories and products they purchased earlier, uh, we cannot uh, personalize, we cannot decide which scenario we would like to use during this journey. So it is really important to have and collect the data in one place. The second one is the website personalization features. Of course, it is really important to having an omnichannel approach and personalizing and segmenting customers. However, if we don't have the related personalization in the website itself, then it will be hard to uh, increase that basket size and improve our average order value in general. This is why the second one would be the website personalization features are really crucial to make this journey seamless. The third one is automated customer journeys. Uh, now we know who we are approaching to. We have the related features in, in the system to personalize uh, in the website. Uh, and now we want to automate all these journeys so that there, there will be no manual work and you would, you would be sure that the system is working and recommending the products as, as you said it in the, at the very beginning so that you can focus on other strategies and other uh, gaps that you want to improve within your website. So how uh, like we position it in, in our system, let me quickly show you to give you the crisp idea easily. Uh, when you look at the, the, the system or marketing automation that you you are using, uh, like it is really important to have the customer profile single source of truth, as we mentioned in the CDP section. So you will be able to see, for example, all list of contacts that you have on your database. And it will be um, like very crucial to have the 360 degree of the profiles when you click on one of the customer contact cards, such as Nicole here, for example. So when you go to one of the customer profile, uh, you, you need to, um, you will be able to see all of the related items regarding uh, this person's past behavior, what they purchase, uh, what is their email address, which uh, product pages and category pages they visited actually and what products uh, actually they, they might be more interested in. The second one we mentioned, we know now we collect this all this 360 degree information in one place, and then we need to create these contents and scenarios within the website personalization part. So this is the part that you can easily activate um, the recommendation frame, social proof mechanisms, and some personalized banners. Uh, once we activated these um, scenarios and contents, now in, in the automation processes, we want to just um, activate a journey for those customers automatically. So in the workflow sections, this is the part we create all these connected experiences. Uh, and in the workflow section, it will be possible easily to craft those journeys from the beginning and you decide each and every step. If a customer clicks on an email and redirects to website, show this personalized banner or use this personalization, personalized pop-up uh, to activate some of the recommended products. So if you want to just, uh, if you want uh, this system to create these journeys for you, you can easily use the workflow library and we will have all these um, scenarios uh, that, that will give you the option to choose which scenario that you want to focus on the left-hand side. If I want to increase revenue, if I want to increase order value, I will have different journeys recommended by the system and I can easily activate those customer journeys uh, within the same page 
and uh, I can check the revenue and the outcomes from those journeys very easily. So we set all these journeys and scenarios. Of course, um, when we say, like we say it actually in the ecosystem, content is the king, uh, but data is the queen. So we want to make sure that we are gaining revenue from the journeys that we set. We are gaining revenue from the recommendation frames. Uh, we will be tracking, for example, click-through rates and open rates, uh, display rates, some of the frames that we already set. Um, those items that I just wanted to highlight, if you have any questions or comments, then I can take it right now. I didn't want to go into too much technicality here, but if you would like to learn more, of course, we can have discussions after this session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ibuka. Very, very good presentation. Uh, and uh, guys, if you have any question to Ibuka presentation, feel free to ask them. Meanwhile, there was a question to Yaroslav. So, we, uh, Yaroslav, uh, what is the best sales boosters from the ones you were presented in your opinion? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, really, I'm not promoting any of tools that I mentioned. Uh, because all of them has their own peculiarities. And uh, speaking about the functionality itself, I would like to use any kind of automation. So if it's AI or if it's aggregated data and it's fully automated and controlled, so you should try it. So and another one point that I want to mention is that the best way you can find by yourself, even to combine several features. So it's also possible because one feature may work on one project and another feature on another project. So everything depends on you and your team that is tuning these functionalities. Great, thank you. Thank you, Yaroslav. Um, is there any more questions? Guys, remember that you can always ask questions after the session, and so uh, don't worry about that. And uh, we will uh, send you the recording from the session uh, this week, so you can rewatch it. And uh, in case of any questions, contact uh, Yaroslav or Ibuka. Uh, and thank you very much, uh, everybody, for the webinar and guys for the presentation. Uh, and see you all soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.